Investors are piling into the same investments, all making the same bets. Things are really getting crowded and that's never a good thing. Historically, when we see this overcrowding, it means we are near the top. That doesn't mean the market will decline tomorrow. It means you need to be very careful, manage your risk, and hedge your bets. Let's see what the hedge funds have been buying. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at all things surrounding the financial system. I want to talk about what has happened in the recent trading day. I want to look at the most crowded buys and shorts. I want to see what the central banks are doing. I'm going to show you so much more. There's a lot of information to cover in today's video. Let's begin by showing you what has happened here in Thursday's trading session. The Dow Jones was not able to squeeze above that 24,000 mark yet again. I'm gonna be following this very closely and you could see it here as I track the progress. Now we're looking at a report done by Goldman Sachs and uh, this is two things I wanna show you. The first one is the 50 stocks that most frequently appear among the largest 10 holdings of hedge funds, okay? You can see that these include familiar names, whether it's Amazon or Facebook or Alphabet, Microsoft, Apple, Netflix, and so on. Very familiar names. You look at the central banks, they're buying the same shares. You look at the major institution, they're buying it as well. And then you see the minnows that follow behind the big fish, all chasing the same stocks. It's called overcrowding. And there's a bottleneck that forms, and ultimately this presents itself as an issue eventually. So whenever you have the cycles that turn over every so often, you have a correction in the markets, you tend to have more equal valuations for these companies because all stocks, if they drop by, let's say, 50%, you start to look, okay, there are you know, some mining stocks that look very good at this time, and you might see retail that looks good, and you might go over to financials and tech and so on. So you have different options. But as time goes on, things get really heated or maybe industries start to weaken and become sort of uh, you know, not necessary or doesn't have the uh, sort of strength it once did. And so you look away from that and start selling out of those positions and buying up other positions. And individual investors simply chase what the major institutions are doing. And the major institutions are looking at all of this as time goes on, and they are concentrating and focusing on fewer and fewer bets. And eventually it gets to a point where there's nothing left. If you look at the previous crisis that was experienced back in 2007, some of the very last few stocks that were rising were tech stocks. So again, Housing started dropping, the financials started dropping, construction and everything else, but tech was that last safe haven. And then we saw them all tumble down. The same thing could be going on today. We'll have to see only in the pages of history, but ultimately overcrowding is a big problem. All right, now we're gonna look at this. 50 stocks that represent the largest short positions. We have some names which will be familiar to most of you, AT&T, Intel, NVIDIA, Walmart, Target, IBM, Exxon, and so on. I'm looking at a lot of retail companies in here. I'm looking at a lot of big box type of companies that are very popular. However, they are being shorted now at this time for different reasons. Retail, obviously, when you can see the changes that have been happening, I've been covering here with all the store closings and everything else. And you see tech that is being purchased and at the same time, sort of the maybe more old school type of companies are feeling the pain. But it's not just one or two industries that are getting shorted right now at this time. I'm looking at a lot of companies. Look, even Caterpillar as one example of that. Big, big names that are owned by Berkshire and others. You know, you want to look at uh, Coca-Cola, for example. And uh, this is just to show you 
sort of a small piece of the puzzle because these hedge funds here are doing very similar things to what the big institutions are doing. They are doing similar things to what the central banks are doing as well. So generally the way it works is the central banks are leading the charge by printing money. They buy up certain shares. Then they also have the institutional investors, you know, the big boys coming out there buying up. You have the hedge funds as well. And then the minnows chasing the big fish behind that. So I want to show you this now. I thought, what a perfect example when we can use the Swiss National Bank, the Central Bank of Switzerland, to see what they have been up to and then decide if it's related to the you know what the hedge funds are doing and also what kind of difference this makes now i've shown you two websites before that i think everybody needs to know and unlike some strange you know media outlets out there they don't tell you where to do things on your own i actually like to do that i think it's really important to empower individuals if i know about something trust me you're going to know about it too as always i keep my sources in the description of every video that i do so you click on the link it brings you over there anyway this is holdingschannel.com and i'll show you one more in just a moment holdingschannel.com is a great website you can look for uh, particular companies whether it's berkshire hathaway or whether it's a swiss national bank i mean you could see all kinds of things here on this website the last report was at the end of 2017 so i really want to see updated figures and i'm really looking forward to that and essentially what we are seeing here on the site if those who don't know who haven't been following me here before you're seeing the 13f now the 13f is filed with the sec in the us and it breaks down all of their positions so you're going to be be able to see what they own how much they bought how much they sold and everything else the Swiss National Bank right now owns a hell of a lot of Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, and so on. All right. Now, what was interesting about this is that what I'm seeing here, AT&T, was that one stock that they were shorting and as you can see back at the end of 2017 it looks like they dumped a bunch of AT&T as well so the Swiss National Bank and the hedge funds in this case seem to be moving together of course every different company and central bank they're all going to act sort of independently but I think to some degree we're going to be seeing a concentration of decisions that occurs so these are the type of things that I think that you should be doing on a regular basis, looking at what you're seeing in the media, look at what the actual companies, the big boys are doing. So what I think you should do is go to a search engine and type in, uh, for example, Holdings Channel Swiss National Bank. You'll get this. Or Holdings Channel um, Berkshire Hathaway. And you could see that. Track the progress as it happens. You're going to get quarterly reports, hopefully, uh, they don't necessarily have to report the information it seems like it can stay private so you won't get it all the time but you can get a good idea of their progress there's you know there's a lot more detail here but uh ultimately you know you'll have to look at it on your own now another website that's important is whale wisdom and that's a very similar site in this website here it allows you to break down all of their current investments, what they've been selling. And in this case here, I organized by the change in shares. And you could see right here what they have been selling. AT&T, I believe, right here. Big sales happening right now. This is, of course, the exact same thing as of the end of 2017. Big, big drops. They have been selling off companies entirely. You could see these... Uh, minus 100%. And anyway, I don't want to get too detailed, too focused on, on this. I just think that it's important to show you here and important to follow this on your own. Don't just rely on me, definitely, because I can't um, cover all of the information. And I know that you have the ability, you have the willingness to do it on your own, and you will. I just 
You need to make sure that you know these two sites, that is whalewisdom.com and holdingschannel.com, definitely keep an eye on those. And then we're going to look at this, what has happened just now in the financials, racing all the gains from 2018, dipping down, whether you're looking at JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and all the rest of the big boys. You can see financials here again, going back to levels. What is that here at basically the end of November? And, you know, all of that money printing, all of that money that has been flowing into the U.S. stocks has done nothing throughout 2018 and it seems like stocks will have trouble rising without QE. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. And last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books at Amazon. There are links in the description of this video. Take care.